Didn't know today would be your last Or that I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk back through that door and tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I believe There will be another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Always made my Troubles feel so small And you were always there to catch me When I'd fall In a world where heroes come and go Where God just took the only one I know so I'll hold you as close as I can Longing for the day when I see your face again But until then, God must need another angel around the throne tonight your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight It's not my place to question Only God Oh, to Jesus I surrender oh.
there seems to be no way He works in ways we cannot see He will make a way for me He will be my guide Hold me closely to His side With love and strength for each new day He will make a way There seems to be no way He works in ways we cannot see He will make a way for me He will be my guide Hold me closely to His side With love and strength for each new day He will make a way
resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. Until by your call, 
we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn 427. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days, that we may live as those who believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please sit for the first Bible reading. Good evening. The first Bible reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. It says, We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left unto the coming of the Lord, 
will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, we be caught up in the clouds together with them and to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Here Thanks ends the reading. May I remain seated as we sing Psalm 23, the Cremon Version. Second Bible reading. Good evening, everyone. A reading from the Word of God written in the book of St. John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. The word of the Lord. Please stand as we sing the hymn 182. God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Part of the sixth verse of the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Words that can serve to encourage and invite us to really think about and celebrate the salvation history of humanity. The salvation history that was made possible through God giving of his only son, Jesus the Christ, to redeem lost humanity. Being the ultimate sacrifice to allow for there to be reconciliation to be possible between God and humanity. For God in seeing humanity drifting more and more away from his loving embrace would not give up hope, but would give as the olive branch itself, Jesus the Christ, to allow for reconciliation to be possible. And so we have Jesus as the ultimate sacrifice, presenting himself and allowing salvation history to become a reality for all. And we are actually celebrating this salvation history in this feast of Easter that we are in now, where we will follow the example and the life of Jesus through the period and recognize that there is always hope. And this hope is made possible in the person of Jesus the Christ. This hope 
that says to us that regardless of whatever we are facing, regardless of whatever we are going through, that there is no need to give up, but to really trust in God's unconditional love for humanity. And so in the person of Jesus the Christ, we see in the life, the ministry, the example of obedience to God. Jesus coming into this world and fulfilling his purpose. A purpose not about condemnation, but about reconciliation of humanity. Amen. And so in responding to being in this world, Jesus would go through the trials and the tribulations. Would face all of the hardships, even the rejection. But being obedient to Almighty God will stay the course. Stay the course of completing the task of allowing for there to be total reconciliation. No need for any more scapegoat. The total reconciliation for humanity. And so Jesus in obedience went through a life where in encountering the hardships, yes, perhaps he had his moments and these moments I think came to a real head in the Garden of Gethsemane where we see real human feelings coming out. Imagine giving your best, trying your best, but then coming to a point where you recognize that everything just seems to be going wrong and frustration sets in. And Jesus, in this point, in the Garden of the Gethsemane, would make that human cry asking for this cup to be taken away but in accepting his purpose and recognizing that there's still a greater meaning behind what was happening we get to the point not my will but thy will be done and it says to us that sometimes we go through life and as we make the sacrifices that are necessary to allow God's love to reign supreme within relationships we encounter challenges. We encounter situations where we can become extremely deflated and be brought to our knees that we can perhaps be at the point of wanting to give up. But the ministry of Jesus says, don't ever give up. Don't ever give up, especially when it comes to giving of your best so as to fulfill your duty to God and your duty to neighbor. Give of your best in all circumstances. And you give of your best as an agent of God's love. And then Jesus being true to his calling. Presents to us then the perfect example of what it means to truly love. And to appreciate God and our neighbors. A true example of God's love. A true example that says, look, even if it means that I have to neglect myself, forget, ignore myself, and stay focused on allowing God to use me in a special way to spread his love, then I must do this. And in order to do this, my friends, for us who are behind, who are trying to follow and to embrace this life and ministry of Jesus, one of the most difficult things that we will find is trying to give of our best and being honest and sincere, genuine in our love, but meeting obstacles. And the only way that we can get past such obstacles is if we are prepared to divorce this selfish thinking that many of us have as individuals. For as we go through a life, sometimes we reach a point where it is either you or me. And when it becomes either you or me, in many cases, it is me. And we are being taught that we should think about ourselves first. But no, Jesus would provide a different example a different example that says, look, even if it is not appreciated, accepted, the genuineness in love means giving sincerely. Agape love, giving without expecting anything in return. 
but being sincere in all of our efforts. And then in the life example, Jesus being the life, a perfect example of how it is possible to give of your best, even though you are faced with rejection, persecution, and hardships. It's a life that speaks volumes about being dedicated and committed to what we are doing. And when we are dedicated to what we are doing, yes, we will take the humps and the bumps that we will encounter, but still be able to stay focused on doing our best to all persons and living a life of purpose. And this life of purpose is not a life that should be interpreted or translated in longevity, but more so in the quality life we live in interacting with each other in relationships. And one of the greatest tests of interacting in relationships where genuine love will present itself is whenever we encounter a crisis in our life. Anytime you're in a crisis and you have a true friend, that friend will be there to the end. And so a crisis situation need not be a bad thing. Perhaps it could be a good thing to inform, to challenge, to invite you to reflect on the relationships you find yourself in and the people you associate with. For a true friend in need is a friend indeed. This genuine love and commitment to relationships that we see in the life and the ministry of Jesus is what we celebrate during this Easter season. We celebrate, we celebrate someone who after wrestling with betrayal denial, being crucified, still being able at that last moment, dying breath, to still ask forgiveness for someone in need. A love that makes us bigger than who, who we can really think that we are as a people and help us to focus on God being the supreme leader the supreme person responsible for all of us. And so my friends, we gather here today to give God thanks for the life and the witness of our departed sister Carlotta. And as we do so, especially to the family members, we will be doing so with mixed emotions. For after all, the relationship that you would have shared with your departed loved one is unique to you and to you only. And this relationship, I am hoping, would have been able to, to demonstrate to you this agape love playing out where the sacrifice and commitment to a cause and living a life of purpose was there as an example for you to share in and to appreciate. I hope it was a life and a relationship where you were able to actually feel the goodness of God within the union the love that you would have shared with your loved one. And even though this separation brought about by death would cause pain, anxiety, perhaps fear, and present a question of what will life be like now that she's no longer with us, that it provides the example that it is possible to have a new beginning, a new leaf, taking on from where she would have left off as an agent of God's love and allowing the experience now to shape your response to relationships and to the world in general where we can show appreciation for the people who mean most to us or the people that we will claim to love dearly. Too often, too often we neglect the efforts of people who would have labored hard and made us who we are today. Too often we allow the roses to only come out in times of mourning and weeping and we do not celebrate the life of the people that has really, really demonstrated sacrifice and commitment to allowing us and shaping our 
or our image and our view on life. I do hope that as you wrestle with the separation of this broken bond of love, that together as a unit, you'll be able to have the shoulders to lean on, the ears to listen, the arms to support, and being able to unite will be able to carry each other through this period. This period that will probably present many challenges in various ways, but you can be stronger for the occasion if you put all of your human resources together. It is not about you and I, it is about us working together, encouraging and supporting each other. And we heard about such an understanding of the need to unite and to trust in God in our first reading, our first reading for this evening where Paul in trying to encourage the church at Thessalonica would try to move them to the point where they do not lose heart in thinking about those who would have gone before the second parousia, the second coming of Christ, but who would able to really unite together and put all of their efforts in believing that yes, we too, rallying together, will be able to come to that point where in seeing the fullness of God working through Jesus, we'll be able to embrace, accept a new life, knowing that all is not lost. We go through our, our Good Friday experiences with much pain and suffering, but my friends, this season says to us, that Easter is coming and Easter is coming with a new life and this new life says to us to look to Jesus the Christ and live we give thanks for the life and witness of our departed sister we commend her to the safe keeping of Almighty God the God of love praying that he will receive her more and more into his joyful embrace as we who are left behind will commit to be offering ourselves as agents of God's love and being able to present ourselves in society as a people of service, being true to our Christian identity, our Christian calling, that we can fulfill our duty in worshiping God and being of service to our neighbors. We thank God and we carry on from where she would have left off, allowing God's love to reign supreme. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the tender mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. We stand and reaffirm our faith in this God. In the words of the Apostles' Creed is printed in the booklet. I believe in God. Father Almighty. The communal six. During the singing of hymn 236, 236, a collection will be received for the upkeep of the cemetery.
Please kneel our seat for the prayers of the church. We pray for those who mourn, especially Thomas, Marshall, and Hickson's families. We commemorate the departed Carlotta. Let us pray with confidence to God, our Heavenly Father, who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead for the salvation of all. Write that your servant may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love her and who love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we be strengthened in our faith, live the rest of our lives in the fellowship with your Son, and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show your mercy to the dying, strengthen them with hope, and fill them with the peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend all people to your unfailing love, that in them your will may be fulfilled, and we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of all, we pray to you for Carlotta, and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May she and all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Let me take this opportunity to extend sincere condolences to the family of our departed sister Carlotta and assure you of the church's prayerful support in this your time of bereavement. Please stand for the commendation. Give rest of Christ to your servant, your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, form of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant, if you're saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Let us commend our sister Carlotta to the mercy of God, our maker, and Redeemer. Deliver your servant, Carlotta, O Sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Carlotta. I acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Onward, Christian soldiers.
Let us pray. Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ, henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow he flees and never stays. In the midst of life we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, and at your last hour, let us not fall away from you. Ensure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God, our sister Carlotta, and we commit our body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor. And when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this, our sister Carlotta, and we ourselves, to be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who having finished their course in faith, now find peace and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not soaring as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, what peace we are.
Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away your displeasure. We are afraid because of your wrathful indignation. Our iniquities you have set before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord. How long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us, the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. There's a land that is fairer than day. We shall sing on that beautiful shore The melodious songs of the blessed And our spirit shall sorrow no more Not a sigh for the blessing of rest In the sweet, In the sweet by, and by, by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet, in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. To Yeah. 
the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more.
The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious unto her. The Lord lift his countenance upon her and give her peace. And unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Come on, everybody, get your feet happy. Let's go, come on.
Didn't know today would be your last Or that I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk back through that door and tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I believe There will be another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Always made my Troubles feel so small And you were always there to catch me When I'd fall In a world where heroes come and go Where God just took the only one I know so I'll hold you as close as I can Longing for the day when I see your face again But until then, God must need another angel around the throne tonight your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight It's not my place to question Only God knows What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, we are loved. Was greater. What can separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Sing your name, oh Lord, how good you 